So I think yeah. let's, if you're happy to share a few things on yep. on looking at risk responses, how do you, so if you, once you've identified, say, five of the main risks, as you've said, moving on to your risk response, how do you, what's the process you guys go through in terms of dealing dealing with that or uh, deciding which risk response or strategy you yeah. would pursue? So we'll, we'll use our existing knowledge of how risk management is handled in, in, in the department um, and our knowledge of the risk management framework and how we handle that at an enterprise level and bring that to the project or, or to, the, to, to whatever the, the process we're assessing and understand and utilise the previous knowledge we have of what can, existing controls are in place and how we've approached certain risks before. Or we have a good understanding as a team of how the department's previously handled risk, whether they've chosen to treat it, whether they've chosen to accept it, um, whether they've chosen to shift it to a, to a contractor or to another process, for example. So we use that knowledge of, of, of how the department currently handles risk and has in the past and try and put that knowledge into completing the risk assessment. Um, and then identifying what residual risk is remaining and, and then identifying how we're going to treat that. Right. So it's really important to have that previous knowledge and to have an understanding of how risk has been previously handled. So we either draw on that from our own knowledge or we will go back to the risk and audit team and say, look, we've got this risk. We think it should be handled like this. How have we done it in the past? Do we know what kind of risk the department has been willing to accept for this level previously after we've done that extreme high, moderate, low right. rating based upon the risk management framework we have. Um, so once we've kind of had that, you know, imparted that previous knowledge, mm. what the department's comfortable with handling layer on it, we're then able to identify what residual risk is remaining and what controls we need to put in place to help manage that risk throughout the life cycle of the project. Right, so basically you're saying that through experience, or otherwise you go back to the assurance team, is you have a, you, there's an understanding of the risk tolerance yeah. that the organisation's prepared to, yeah. to accept and your risk rating really happens and, and your treatment really happens in relation to the, the, the risk tolerance. Yeah, it's really important for us to understand what the department is generally willing to accept. Right. Like we know that there's different levels with our, our risk matrix says, um, you know, at a moderate, you've got to have this certain level of, of person acceptor, and you go high extreme, it's even higher up the chain. Um, so it's really important to understand how the how risk is governed in the in the department as well when you're applying that risk tolerance factor. Right. Um, and you know, you, you, you get to know after a period of time who's willing to say yes to what. Right. And what, um, how you've got to then brief those appropriate executives or management teams in terms of this is what you're accepting. I know you've done it. It's very really similar to this risk that we talked about last month, last year, um, and really imparting that previous knowledge and giving them the comfort around the risk that they're accepting and, and owning right. and all the and all the management controls that they've got to put in place to, to either lower it or to keep it at that level as well. Okay. So I think it's a good segue into assigning risk ownership, mm. I guess. So how, how does it happen? Are there any pitfalls with that? Uh, is it last guy standing ends up with a risk? Yeah. or? Or how does that yeah. Risk ownership is probably the most challenging part of the risk assessment process because then it involves allocating responsibilities. Yeah. And that means you've got to find the right person who's not only skilled but understands the risk that they are owning and the controls that they've got to put in place. We generally start with the owner of the, the information or the owner of the project right. um, and we work our way down from there. So we might go to a, a owner of a system, a system owner and say, these risks are associated with your system. As the system owner, you need to work, you need to tell us who the risk owner is and how we engage with them. Um, at a project, you might start with the project board and you might present to the project board the residual risks and the, and the controls in place and say, this is it. We, As the board, you are the owners. They may choose to delegate as well. So right. they might pick different people in a project team to then own the risk from an operational perspective in terms of making sure that those risks and the, the associated management controls are put in place and right. maintained along the way. But we try and leverage those governance yeah, areas yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Yeah. to then help us identify who the right risk owners are. And sometimes you just know who it's gonna be. A lot of technical operational risk, you just know it's gonna be a CIO. A lot of procurement related risk, you know it's gonna be the head of procurement. You right. just know these things. Yeah. But then they might, again, choose to delegate. You document that delegation for them. And then as part of that ownership process, you then deal with those people who then report to the eventual owner. 